to a team running and welcome to the very first teachings of a Ronin. today I want to talk about the practice of the mind I want to talk about the importance of mental health like physical fitness and physical training training your mind every single day is very critical for how we look at the world is how we're gonna live how we look upon things is our truth so why not train your mind to live positive. Why not train your mind to live a positive life so you can have more success, more happiness, more of a fulfilling life, right? You don't have to be a victim of trauma to worry about the practice of mental health. Truly, it should be practiced every single day, even with a person with no um, traumatic experience in their past. Mental health is one of the most important things that you can do on a daily basis. The practice of the mind has always been very important to me as a martial artist, as a warrior. But I tell you why mental health was so important to me. After my time in service, you know, I, I reached this state of depression. I did 23 years, 18 plus years of that was with the Special Forces. I traveled to 27 countries. So I experienced a lot throughout my career. And I tell you, after going from 150 miles an hour to a dead stop, you know, let me tell you what happens when things come to a dead stop. The, the war, the war finally caught up with me. So at that time, you know, I reached a state of pretty bad depression. And I needed to study how the mind worked. I needed to understand how things work so I could kind of come up with a course of action in order to beat this. You know, as a special forces soldier, we're always constantly looking for intelligence. And we take the raw intelligence and we dissect that intelligence on how it pertains to us and our mission, right? My mission was to find peace. So I needed to gather the intelligence on how a mind works and how the body is connected to the mind in order to come up with a course of action to, to meet my end state, which was peace. Right? And I came to realize that, you know, the mind is connected to the body. You ever felt, um, you ever seen a scary movie and then you felt it throughout your entirety? You ever had a, you know, a thought that irritated you and you just felt that rage or you felt that pain, that heaviness in your chest? Well, that's your mind connected to the body. A lot of bodybuilders can tell you that, you know, they make that mind connection to the body. Martial artists the same way. We make that, that mind connection to the body. Same thing with mental health. If your mind is negative, then your body is going to feel that negativity. And in time, that can truly cause sickness like cancer. A lot of times people tell me, hey, I'm fine, but yet they drink like a fish, right? So you're masking these emotions. Well, you mask these emotions enough when you don't have those dependents, then that emotion is going to surface and then you're back to square one. So how do you get over traumatic events? How do you train your mind to have a positive energy? Okay. So let's talk about the mind. Let's talk about why is the mind always thinking about negative stuff, right? Why am I always thinking about negative stuff? Why am I not focused on all the positives in my life? Well, as a human being, as an animal species, we're trained to survive. That's in, embedded into our brain. So the mind focuses on survivability. So if you faced a traumatic event before, the mind is going to tell you, hey, I don't want to go there. But what happens is we overthink things. As a human being, we overanalyze. So we say, what if? What if this happens? Oh, I see this sign. I can't get over the past. You're releasing those chemicals from your mind into your body. So you're releasing the anxieties of the future. You're releasing, you know, the, the sadness of your mistakes from the past. You have to let it go and you have to truly live in what is. In all of time, which is the past, the future, and the present, the present moment embodies the whole time. So you have to live within the present moment. 
okay? So for me, it was about understanding that and then applying the practices in order for my mind to truly live in this present moment. Now, there's a lot of practices, right? I, I have seen it around the world. I've seen ancient monks uh, heal their bodies through just mind. Thing. So how do we train such a powerful muscle? Well, for me, it was through different forms of meditation. And there's so many practices of meditation, but I found that there was a certain series of practices that helped me. I started with mindfulness meditation, which was uh, a Eastern practice of uh, Zazen, is to truly be in that present moment. Mindfulness meditation allows you to kind of block out the future and block out the past and truly dive into the present moment. And we do this through breathing exercises and positioning of the body. What I found was that this is a very hard practice and it took me close to five years to truly understand it and, and master my mind. During the process, I had to train my mind to be in the present moment. And doing mindfulness meditation can be extremely hard, especially for people that have traumatic experience from the past. It's hard to quiet down the noises. In fact, if you just sit there right now and you just trying to concentrate on your breathing, you're going to probably think about something else. It's truly a hard practice. So how do you implement mindfulness meditation and positivity throughout your day? All right, guys, before we get into the practical application of meditation, there's two things I want to cover. So going back to that survivor mindset, that survivor mindset, as in it looks for comfort, it looks for the, the the issues and looks for the problems because your survivor mindset is trying to tell you, hey, look, pay attention. But a lot of these things, it won't equate to you living a peaceful life, right? So it's being able to quiet down that noise. You have to understand how to frame your day, okay? So when I say framing a day is that you want to build discipline throughout your day. Remember what we're doing. We're trying to break out that routine that survivor mindset, the comfort zone. So in order to do that, you have to completely be a different person. You have to take on a different mindset, a different approach to your routine, to your day. In order to move past that negative energy of the past, well, you're gonna to have to create new neurological pathways in your brain connected to your body. And that's by injecting positive thoughts into your mind. Before we do that, you have to understand how to frame your day. Right? Framing a day is super important. You have to break out from that regular routine. A lot of us go through life going, hey man, how come I don't, you know, I can't be happy? How come um, I'm not accomplishing this? How come I'm not successful in this arena? Well, it's because you're probably doing the same thing every single day. You have to change that routine. You truly have to make time to improve yourself every single day. If you have a set routine and set schedule, in time, it becomes habit. And what I want to do is I want to establish a habit of discipline every day. It's about defeating your day. So for me, I get up at, I get up pretty early in the morning. I get up at five o'clock in the morning. And people are like, whoa, why do you get up so early, right? The reason why is because the survivor mind that seeks the comfort, that seeks to lay in that warm bed. You have to break that up. So by getting up early, it allows me to build that discipline. It allows me to break that weak mindset of seeking comfort. Second, it allows me to truly get up before the sun comes up. It allows me to work on myself prior to the day. So if I'm able to frame the day, that means if I'm able to get up early and I'm able to meditate, it puts my mind in a positive mood and throughout the day, I'm more productive. I have more energy. So as a businessman, that's super important to have that energy so you can give to the business, so you can give to others. So truly it's about renewing the mind. It's about changing your daily routine to become the person you wish to be. So when do I meditate? I meditate uh, early in the morning and I meditate late at night. And those are two different forms of meditation. So let's talk about the practice of meditation. 
So when do I meditate? I meditate early in the morning because it puts me in a positive mood. If I'm in a positive mood, then I can project more energy towards whatever I'm directing towards that day. I can project more energy towards others. I can help more because I have that energy. And that's what you want in the morning. You want to inject that positivity into your mind and then in return, it will be delivered throughout your body. So let's talk about the place, right? Where do I meditate? Well, anywhere that you feel comfortable, right? And you can, I personally like to meditate outside because I love nature and I like to connect with that energy. But if it's cold because I live here in Colorado, um, sometimes I'll meditate inside. It's, it's really where you feel comfortable, right? In a quiet place where you're not gonna be disturbed. I right, so let's talk about body position. All right, so I'm not really particular on how you get your body position long as you're comfortable, okay? So you can stand, you can lay down, or you can sit in traditional uh, Zazen meditation uh, positions. If you want to practice the traditional way, then usually what I do is I have a meditation um, mat, you can kind of see it here, and a meditation pillow. These two things you can purchase as a package on Amazon.com. So then you go down to your usual meditation position, okay? So have designated places that you go to to meditate because the more comfortable you are in these areas, the better that you can lock on to that meditation, that present moment. In the morning when I go into my meditation, in the morning is about positive energy. It's about mindfulness gratitude and positive energy. So those are the energies that I'm injecting to my bodies in the morning. At nighttime is more about reflection, you know, so it's a different type of meditation. So let's talk about the morning. Let's talk about prepping your meditation. So prepping meditation is super important. You want to go to your meditation position, right? So in a sitting position, I usually sit like Indian style. Whatever's comfortable for you. Some of you guys got injuries. It's okay to lay down. It's okay to sit down on the couch or it's okay to sit in the insta, whatever it's comfortable for you. Before I even go into meditation, I want to talk about prepping the meditation. Prepping the meditation is changing the physiology of your body. All right. So for me, when I was in the special forces, if I was scared, Right? If I was facing fear, I would change my physiology. That means I would, I would just smile, right? And, and the brain is connected to that muscle, right? The brain is connected to the body, like I said before. So you have established that neurological pathway to your brain or communicating with your brain. By smiling, it delivers those signals that, hey, everything's good. Everything's all right. So when I'm facing fear, I change my physiology. So when I wake up in the morning, I have to wake up my brain, right? Because, you know, in the mornings, I'm still kind of not awake yet. So to wake up my brain, I change my breathing patterns. The comfortable seated position, and I change my breathing patterns. I'm, I'm putting more oxygen to my brain, delivering more signals to my brain. So it kind of looks funny, but it looks like this. I take nine shallow breaths really fast and I take the 10th breath um, slow. So it takes about five seconds to inhale on that last breath and then I hold for five seconds and I exhale for five seconds and I repeat that three to four times. So it looks like this, it looks kind of funny. Okay, so we're getting good position.
All right, guys, so now your turn. Try to breathe nine times really fast. This is the pace. And then your 10th breath, five seconds to inhale, hold for five seconds, five seconds exhale. The only thing I want you to concentrate is just your breathing right now. This is not meditation. This is prepping for the meditation. This is changing your physiology, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm waking up that brain, okay? So once I wake up that brain, after about three to four reps, I can feel my brain kind of waking up, all right? So my body's waking up. So after I, I do three to four reps of that, I go into a state of gratitude, right? So I'm, you know, I'm just expanding that energy. I'm showing my gratitude to God. I'm showing my gratitude for life and the blessings that um, God has given me. So after I finish breathing, I go into a state of gratitude. You know what's unique is when you, when you place your hands, your palms together, and put it close to your heart right here, you can feel the energy flow throughout your body, as in the heartbeat, you can feel it through your palms. After I finish my gratitude, I go into a state of zazen. So I'm going to a state of here and now. The, the form of meditation is called mindfulness meditation. So mindfulness meditation is, is, is a form of a practice of zazen. So zazen is being present in the moment. It's not thinking about the future and it's not thinking about the past. It's just truly in the present moment in what is. Okay, so how you train your mind to do that is you sit still and I get into the good meditation seating position. Shoulders roll back, lungs expand. Then I go into my five seconds inhale, five seconds exhale, five seconds inhale, five seconds exhale. A focal point on the ground. So I pick a place on the ground that I'm looking at roughly about a 45 degree angle from my meditation position. Five seconds inhale, five seconds exhale. The only thing I'm thinking is breath. I'm not thinking about anything else. I want you to think about only your breath controls. Inhale, five seconds, exhale. Now it should be work, right? It's not a natural flow of things. It should, you should be drawing in air and then pushing out air for that complete five seconds. And what you do at that time is you kind of just kind of forget about the world. Okay, and you're breathing in and out, and you're getting, you're training your mind to be in the present moment. And guys, in time with this practice, you can apply anywhere. When I was in the special forces, I would apply these meditation during uh, preparation for free fall. As we go up, I'll meditate uh, as we're going up on a free fall jump, and then it gives me clarity on that infill. Same with, same with. Same with operations and missions. If I can truly block out the emotions on things and I can dive into the root of what is. And truly what is, is the present moment, right? It's not the fear that hasn't taken place yet and it's not the you know traumas of the past. That has nothing to do with the mission. So this practice is great for a warrior. So you wanna practice mindfulness meditation for at least five to 10 minutes. For me, you know, it's gonna be hard at first, so try two minutes. And if you, if you get that, try five minutes. And then try to get up to about 10 to 15 minutes of mindfulness meditation. So after I go about 10 to 15 minutes of mindfulness meditation, concentrate only on my inhales and exhale, five seconds in, five seconds out. Then I go into what's called injecting positive memories into my brain. So let's talk about that. So now that I awaken my brain and I have shown gratitude and then I dive into what is, which is the present moment, I'm truly surrounded in what is now, right? Then I go into a state of projecting positivity into my brain. So that means Remember when I talked about the survivor mindset? The survivor mindset always looks for the negative. It always looks to remind you of the traumas of the past because it's trying to tell you, hey, look, pay attention. It's trying to survive, right? It looks for comfort. 
So you have to break that normal routine, and you do this through projecting positive energy into your brain. Because if I'm able to project positive energy into my brain, then I'll feel it throughout my body. I'll feel that energy. Okay? And if I'm able to do that in the mornings, well, I just have a better productive day. All right, so after I do the mindfulness meditation, then I go into the same position. Five seconds inhale, five seconds exhale, five seconds inhale, five seconds exhale. But at this time, I don't concentrate on my breath. I concentrate on a positive experience. Just like a negative experience, right? When you have, when I, when I, when you talk about a negative experience, where well, there's an emotion tied to that experience. Truly, you can fabricate that emotion in your mind. You can fabricate that memory in your mind, and you can feel it throughout your body. And that's why people have anxiety attacks, depressions, and all that. So if you're able to reverse the cycle and you're able to project positivity in your brain, then that delivers positive signals into your body, giving you more energy, giving you more positivity in life, allowing you to live happy and full. All right, so get into a good seating position. Expand your lungs. Five seconds inhale, five seconds exhale. Now what I'm doing is I'm thinking about something that's positive. A positive experience and I'm projecting it out of my brain. It can be meeting the one you love. It can be uh, your house, your car, your accomplishments, whatever. Find that moment that you're like, wow, this is great. Okay, so find that happy day and go back to that happy day and project that memory into your brain. As you do this and as you're breathing in time, you're going to still, you're going to start feeling the energy grow in your core. You're going to start feeling the energy grow in your body. And the more positivity you inject into your mind during your meditation, the more energy you're going to feel. Okay. The reason why I go into the positivity portion last, because it gives me that positive, it gives me that energy I need. And then the last step after I have gone through, you know, prepping the meditation, by awakening my mind, changing my physiology, I go into a state of gratitude, I go into a state of mindfulness, zazen, and then I project positivity, which is about 10 to 15 minutes. So all together, it's about 30 minutes for me to meditate in the morning. After I go into positivity meditation, is about, man, it's about releasing that energy, right? Because truly the body is connected to the mind. For me, it's about physical fitness. It's about going down to the gym, and it's about releasing that energy in a very positive way. And what I find when I do this, right, in the mornings is, gosh, guys, I'm telling you, I have a lot of energy. A lot of energy throughout my day if I'm able to do these necessary steps in the morning to kind of prep me for a positive day. If you're able to frame your day, if you're able to... Uh, master the day, and you're able to do that consistently, well, in time, you're going to be successful at whatever you do. In time, you're going to meet that, that goal. You're going to meet that happiness, that fulfillment, that success, or whatever you're doing. Too many times in life, I feel like we look for the externals. That means if I get this promotion, if I get this, this raise, if I get whatever, right? Uh, if I get this position, those are all external things. Those are all external things. Yes, you want to work for that. You want to strive to be the best person you can be. But truly, it's about working on yourself. Working yourself in the morning and establish that positivity by framing your day, you're just going to be more productive throughout the day. And for the people that are facing depression and facing traumatic experience from the past, this is truly how you're able to sever it. You're able to sever all those negative negative thoughts that's projecting all these toxins into your body by projecting positive thoughts in the morning through breathing and meditation and gratitude, okay? So, like I said before, this is going to take a little bit. It's going to take a while to, to understand the concept and understand the practice. You're able to do this in the morning. You're able to frame that day to be positive, and you do this constantly enough. Guys, that's a win. I want to talk about in framing the day is that 
is the little battles. Don't neglect the little things. Okay, so the little things is, you know, when I wake up is hygiene. Okay, it's making my bed. It's washing the dishes. It's eating properly throughout my day. That's how you win the day. If you're able to win these little victories throughout the day, it's just going to give you more energy, more energy, because you're defeating the day. That leads me to what I do at night, which is reflection, meditation. All right, so usually I go into a quiet place after my day is over, and I go into a state of mindfulness again. So I go back into the state of being here in the present moment. So during the day, I'm concentrating on work. I'm concentrating on, you know, product development. I'm concentrating on business. So my mind is constantly spinning. So at the end of the day, I need to slow down the brain. So I do this by meditating at night. And I, I start meditating at night after my duty day is over. And I go into a quiet place. I get into a good meditation uh, posture. And I go into mindfulness meditation. So I do the same thing I did in the morning, right? The mindfulness meditation to be here in the present moment, right? By five seconds in, five seconds out, I'm fixing on a focal point at that 45 degree angle, and I'm just concentrating on being in that present moment. After I finish that, it goes into about 15 to 20 minutes of reflecting on that day. Did I accomplish everything that I need that day? What did I do that fell short of that day? I truly go into that state of reflection, right? Because if you're able to reflect back on the day, then, well, you won't make the same mistakes that you did the day prior, right? So that's the thing is that if you make mistakes during that day, you fell short. Hey, guys, we all make mistakes. We're human beings. But you're able to fix yourself the next day when that's a win. All right, guys, so that's how I frame my day. And I hope that this practice of Zazen and living in the present moment can truly help you. So let's recap. First, I get up early in the morning because I'm defeating routine. Second, I go into a state of awakening my mind by prepping the meditation, by breathing. And then I go into gratitude, mindfulness meditation for 10 to 15 minutes. And then I go into positive meditation for 10 to 15 minutes. Then I go into physical training to release that energy. At the end of the day, I go into more of a state of reflecting meditation where I, I reflect back on the day and I look at the positivities and I look at the negatives and then I try to fix all the negatives the next day. All right guys, so that's how I frame my day and that's how I apply you know, mindfulness and zazen to my daily life. Don't neglect training the mind, right? Too many times we concentrate too much on the physical aspects of training. The mind is how we look at the world. So if you have a strong mind, you're gonna look at the world with a strong attitude. So train, train your mind, train your brain every single day to be positive and you'll live a positive life. If you're able to defeat the day consistently, well, that's the recipe for success, happiness, fulfillment. So don't stop, don't give up on yourself. It takes time. So I asked the monk one time, what's the best form of meditation? And the monk said, the one that you do every single day. So don't give up. A journey of a thousand miles begin with a single step. Into our next teachings of Aronin, life in every breath.